Hello again, Mike Mazzalongo here, BibleTalk.tv. Uh, we're doing our small group series uh, entitled How to Love Someone You Hate. We are on uh, lesson number seven, uh, and the title of this lesson is uh, Winning the Peace, Winning the Peace. So as we do for each uh, of these uh, sessions, let's uh, review the strategy that the Bible lays out for us uh, to help us love those that we hate very quickly. Uh, number one, bless and don't curse. The beginning of loving our enemy begins with our mouth, right? We begin to control the things that we say about the person that we are at odds with. Number two, walk a mile in their shoes. The only way to uh, develop some sort of sympathy, empathy, feeling, positive feeling for uh, the individual who is our enemy is to try to understand the, some of the motivations that uh, moves them to do uh, what they are uh, doing. Uh, number three, never take your own revenge. And the key word, as we said, is never, never take revenge. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And we have to remember that admonition from uh, God as far as our relationships with people that we have problems with. Never take revenge, number three. And number four, plan something beautiful in the sight of all. We go from what we say, what we think, what our attitude is, what our prayers are about, what our intentions are. We go from kind of inward changes to an external change, something that we do, planning something beautiful to do for our enemy in the sight of all. Okay, so let's uh, talk about the fifth step in learning to love uh, someone that uh, we are at odds with, someone we hate, someone we can't stand. Um, a lot of people, uh, when they uh, are involved in a conflict, uh, many times are more interested in winning the war instead of winning the peace. Uh, they want to you know, prove that they're right. You know, a lot of times <laughs> the argument and the debate is about who is right, or they want to uh, get an apology, or they, they want to show that they are the victims. They want everyone to know they're the ones that have been hurt and you know, a lot of their energy, a lot of their emotions are about uh, uh, you know, uh, gaining the sympathy of others uh, concerning their plight. Now sometimes when the issue is resolved, they're quite satisfied to simply be rid of the person that caused the problems. For example, someone offends you and after a while you get an apology and then uh, your next uh, action is you make sure that you never have anything to do with this person ever again. Well, yes, you got an apology. You think you got some kind of closure, but that doesn't equal spiritual closure, you know, closure rather. In loving our enemies, we have to you know, engage with them at a certain point. Uh, if uh, we've managed to find some, some uh, peace, some sort of understanding, uh, it's very tempting to just say, okay, good, now I, I can have nothing to do with you forever uh, and, and think that that is a satisfying conclusion uh, in the eyes of God or as a, as a, as a Christian. So we read uh, Romans uh, chapter 12, verse 18, what Paul says uh, about these situations. He said, if possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Being at peace with all men doesn't mean ignoring people or, you're, or cutting them out of your life. Yeah, I'm at peace with them. I never talk to them ever again. I think Paul is uh, you know, requiring a little more from us uh, here when he says, uh, so far as it depends on us, uh, be at peace with all men. In this passage, Paul gives the commandment upon which the first, uh, the fifth step rather, is based. And then he provides qualifiers for it. So the fifth step is don't just, you know, don't just win the war, win the peace. You know, establish the, the basis for the relationship that you will have with that person uh, in the future. Uh, just because conflicts may be resolved doesn't mean that you've reached your objective in loving your, your enemy. Uh, overcoming evil with good doesn't mean that the objective is that our enemy is defeated, uh, uh, that our enemy is put in their place or shown up for what they, they really are. Uh, remember, it's the evil that is defeated, not the enemy. You know, we said that in the very first lesson, the thing, uh, the thing that's causing the problem is not the other person, but it's the evil in the person 
that is creating the problem that is offensive or that has hurt us in some way. And so we're trying to defeat the evil in the person, the evil that that person has done and not necessarily the person uh, themselves. Uh, the final victory is when we're able to have a loving relationship with our enemy and there is no evil between us. So if, if, the, if the evil is destroyed or overcome or neutralized, then there's a chance to have a relationship with the person. And that's what we're shooting for as Christians. This is a, the basic teaching from Jesus in the, the Sermon on the Mount. He says, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of God. No better witness uh, for you that you are a son of God, that uh, your objective in a, a broken relationship or a difficult relationship is that you're winning the peace. You're overcoming the evil with good in order to win the peace uh, with that individual. Now, Paul's admonition to strive for peace with your enemy has several conditions that he himself mentions. For example, he says, if it is possible, you know, if it's possible, be at peace with all men. If it is possible, going for peace, trying to be at peace with your enemy, uh, making the effort to create or to renew a relationship, this is your responsibility as, as a Christian. However, you're not always dealing with people who are Christians, uh, or you're not always dealing with Christians who are acting like Christians. In other words, you don't control everything. Sometimes it is not possible because no matter how hard you try, the other person refuses to cooperate, refuses to listen, refuses to understand. For example, an unbeliever who refuses any attempt at peace and leaves the relationship. You know, Paul talks about that in 1 Corinthians 7, 15, talking about the marriage relationship, but it's the same thing. You know, you're at odds with someone you know, at your work or a friend or something like that, and they've done something truly you know, uh, nasty that has hurt you and harmed you in some way, and you're trying to do all these things, and that person wants nothing to do with you. Uh, you can't overcome that. Uh, so there are some limitations on you know, the amount of uh, uh, influence that you have. And Paul uh, mentions this. Uh, sometimes uh, you, you, you're working with a, a believer and that believer wants nothing to do with you, doesn't want to deal with the, with the situation. Well, you know, you're, you're, you're helpless in that type of uh, situation, of course. Sometimes it's impossible because to have peace, to have a relationship, would mean that you would have to compromise what's right. For example, uh, I remember in the early years when I first became a Christian, peace with my family or having a, you know, uh, having a good relationship with them would mean that I had to compromise my faith in some ways. Uh, simple things, you know, they would always plan things on Sunday. If there was a picnic, if there was a family dinner, if there were company coming, they would, also, they would always do it you know, uh, on a Sunday, for, for lunch on a Sunday. And, and, and uh, our family lived, you know, out of town. We were about 30, we lived about 30 miles, 35 miles away from them. So we couldn't do both. We, we, we couldn't go to church and attend services and then go there because we'd miss most of the, uh, the family, uh, you know, the family celebrations, the family gatherings. Uh, and, and so it was the only way that, uh, uh, the only way that they offered us to have some sort of you know, time with them. So we had to choose, you know, do we continue be, to be faithful to the assembly and to serve and so on and so forth, or do we just stop going to church and start going to you know, family reunions and family activities on Sunday? Eventually, you know, they came around, eventually they watched how we acted, eventually uh, they uh, realized that we meant no harm, we meant no disrespect, but that our faith was important to us. And eventually with time, they came around, they started changing the schedule and uh, we managed to, to create a peaceful relationship, very loving relationship with both sides of our family. So my point is that it isn't peace at all costs. You know, to have peace with your enemy, uh, with the person that offends you or whatever that you have difficulty with, you may have to give up things, you may have to make an effort, but it isn't peace at all costs. You know, there are some things you can't compromise. In loving your enemy, you have to accept that 
total victory depends not just on you. There are circumstances that can and do uh, prevent this from happening. So you have, to, you have to accept this idea. A second condition in seeking the peace, Paul says, uh, as far as it depends on you, if it is possible, first condition, as far as it, de as far as it depends on you, your job in a relationship is to do good and to seek peace, whether the other person wants to or not. You cannot, however, force peace. You can't force a, a loving relationship on a person who does not want that. In the end, you have to live with God and you have to live with, your, with yourself. If you consciously seek peace with your enemy, then you'll be able to live with yourself and with the Lord in peace even if you can't live in peace with your enemy because your enemy refuses to have a relationship with you. When you can say, I've done everything I know how to do to win the peace, well then the burden is on the other person. And even if they don't respond to you, your own conscience is, is clear and you can be at peace with God and be at peace with yourself. All right. That's the, uh, that's the uh, teaching part of this uh, session. I want to read uh, a couple of questions that you can uh, use for your discussion period and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Question number one. Give an example in your own life where your goal was to win the war and not win the peace. Question number two. Why is it not always possible to win the peace with everyone? Provide personal examples if possible. Question number three, what kinds of things do you think may be blocking the peace you seek with the person you are at odds with? Question number four, select a person to lead a prayer for God to remove the roadblocks to peace in your situation.